Welcome to this video on probability. In this video, we are going to go over some basic term related to probability. Before we get into the definition of probability and start calculating the probability, we need to know some fundamental terms. That is exactly what we are exploring in this video. First, we are going to define an experiment and we are going to look at some demonstration related to experiment. An experiment is a planned operation carried out under controlled condition. So this is the act of doing something. It's a planned operation carried under controlled condition. And if the result of the experiment is uh, not predetermined or we don't know what will be the result of the experiment, then we say that the experiment is a random experiment or the experiment is said to be an chance experiment. So here I have three examples of experiment. The first one is flipping a fair coin twice. So you are flipping a coin and you are doing this experiment two times. So flipping a fair coin is an example of experiment. We don't know what will be the outcome by flipping the coin. You may get hit two times, you may get tell two times, you may get hit first and then tell or tell first and then hit. We don't know. So this is an example of experiment. Similarly, the second example is rolling a six-sided fair dice is an experiment. When you roll a dice, okay, you don't know what is the result. What you'll obtain in the first roll, you may get a five. When you roll it again, you may get five again. You may roll again, you may get two. Roll it again, you may get five and so on. Uh, spinning a six-color spinner is an experiment. So a spinner is there, it has six different color. When you spin it, where you land, we don't know what it is. That's an experiment. So I'm going to show you each of these using an animation here. So first, here I am going to flip this coin and I'm going to look at the result. So let me flip it first. What I got is a tell. So the value of 10 is a tell. And I obtain that one time or I perform the experiment only one time I perform the experiment again total number two first I got hate tell and then now I got first it was tell now I got hate one in one flip again let's see what we will get I have one in one you can see flip it again see I got two here so meaning of that is I obtain hate. You can also look at this figure. I got hate. First I got tell, then hate, then hate. I don't know what I'm going to obtain next, but I'm going to flip and check it. I got hate again. I don't know what I'm going to get again. Let me flip again. I got a tell. You can see here. Flip again. I got a hate. So you can carry out the experiment. You don't know what the result will be, but here are my outcomes. I got tell, then hate then hate, then hate, then tell, then hate, when I perform the experiment for six times. And here I have the little table for that. Hate I got four times, tell I got two times. So this is the frequency table of the outcome of that experiment of flipping a coin. Let me show you rolling a dice now. So here is a dice. I'm going to roll it and I don't know what I'm going to get. So on the first roll, I got a six. Let me roll again. I got one. Roll again. I got five. Roll again. I got one. Roll again. I got four. Roll again. I got one. Roll again. I got five. Roll again. I got a three. Roll again. I got four. So let me do one more. Roll again. I got one. So I performed the experiment ten times. I got one four times. Three one time. Four two times, five, two times, six, one time. This is the frequency table for the outcomes when I roll these dice for 10 times. So this is an example of experiment. Let's do one more. So here I'm going to spin this spinner here. And here in this spinner, you can see that there are six different color. The first color is the purple or violet color. Second is orange, you have a blue, then you have red, you have yellow and green. Now let me spin and see what I'll get in my first spin. 
I spin that and I got the violet color. Okay, I got the violet color there. Let me spin it again. When I spin for the second time, I get yellow color. Spin again, I got red color. So you can see that as we spin, we get different color. We don't know the, the outcome of the experiment or we don't know what we'll get after we spin. So this is an example of experiment. Now we have the fundamental idea of experiment. Now we are going to define the second term here. And that second term is the outcome. Outcome is the result of the experiment. The result of the experiment is outcome. So let's try this one more time and let's write the outcome. Okay, let's find out what will be the outcome by flipping a fair coin twice. If I flip a coin two times, what will be my outcome? Let me write that outcome by flipping the coin twice. So here is my coin. If I flip once, I obtain head. If I flip it again, I obtain head. So in my experiment here, by flipping the head two times, I got head and head. That is the outcome of my experiment. So here my outcome is the first is head, second is also head. Next one is rolling a six-sided fair dice. So if you roll the six-sided fair dice, let's do it one time and find out what we'll get. So if I roll it once, I get six. Suppose I'm going to roll three times. Let's do that. Second, I got three. Third, I got one. So my outcomes are six, three, and one. So my outcomes are six, three, and one. Next, if we spin a six color spinner, let's spin this two times and find out what we'll get. So let's spin the first time. By spinning the first time, we got blue. We spin it again and we get yellow color. So my outcomes are blue and yellow when I spin this for two times, blue and yellow. So my outcomes are blue and yellow. So whenever we write the outcome of the experiment, we write the outcome of the experiment as a set. So meaning of that is we have to enclose these outcomes in set bracket or curly bracket like this. If you miss this curly bracket, that is incorrect notation. So this is how we write the outcome of the experiment. So in the first slide here, we define experiment and we experimented all these three. And in the second slide here, we talk about the result of the experiment, what we obtain by performing the experiment. We obtain outcomes and these are the outcomes. Let's do one more uh, basic term here. It's called the sample space. When we say sample space, sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes. What are the possible outcomes? What we might get by performing the experiment? There are three ways to represent the sample space. That is to list the possible outcomes or to create a tree diagram. And the last one is to create a Venn diagram. So for example, here, flipping a fair coin twice. If I flip a coin twice, what are the possibilities? For example, if I flip the coin for the first time, I may get a head or a tail. If I flip it again, suppose first we get head. Now when I flip the coin again, I may get a head or a tail. So I may get a head and then a tail. That's one possibility. The next possibility is first I got a tail. When I flip it again, I may get a head or a tail. So I may get a head or a tail. That means if I want to list the possible outcomes, 
the possible outcomes are one possibility is head and then head that can be written as h and h next we have first head and then tell so first you get head and then tell next possibility is first you get a tell and second you get head so tell head and the next one is first you get a tell and second also you get a tell tell and tell so these are the possibilities these are all possible outcomes so the set of all possible outcomes set when we say set we enclose in the set bracket this is our sample space so sample space for flipping a fair coin twice is s equal to first head second head first head and then tell first tell and then head tell and tell so this is the sample space next rolling a six-sided fair dice if you roll a dice what do you will get when you just roll a dice you may get one or you may get two you may get three or four or five or six nothing more than that so your sample space is it is the set one two three four five six so these are the possible outcomes so the set of all possible outcomes that is called the sample space spinning a six colored spinner the spinner that i showed you before the colors were violet color orange color blue color red color yellow color and green color so we have to list all those because those are the possibilities you will get one of those six so the possibilities is all those so that is the sample space so you can see s equal to purple orange blue red yellow and green so this is the sample space so here i said we can create the sample space and we can write the sample space using the listing or we can just list the possible outcomes so this is the list this is the list this is the list the second one is to create a tree diagram so this little diagram that i have created here this is called the tree diagram okay sometimes we can also use table or venn diagram we are going to get into venn diagram later on but you'll see the table in a little bit so these three terms are very important in probability the first one we started with experiment next we talk about outcome now here we learn about sample space still before we move on to the formal definition of probability you must know how to write the sample space so we are going to practice this so here is an example a survey consists of asking people for their blood types o a b and a b those are the four different types of blood but each type of blood contains something called a rh factor and that can be positive or negative so based on that we are asked to determine the number of outcomes and identify the sample space so here in order to find the number of outcome and then list the sample space let's begin by making a tree diagram so first we are going to start with blood types so I'm going to write blood types so there are four types of blood O A B and A B O based on the RH you have O positive and O negative based on RH A can be A positive or A negative based on rh b can be b positive and b negative based on rh ab can be ab positive and ab negative now after we have this this is the tree diagram okay this is the tree diagram to show the number of outcomes so we need to determine the number of outcomes always remember the number of outcomes is always equal to always equal to the last 
you know the last branch in the tree how many branches are there one two three four five six seven eight so you can say number of outcome number of outcomes is equal to eight and the way we obtain this is you can see we have four different types of blood four and then we have two rh factor rh positive and rh negative so four times two is equal to eight so that is how we can obtain the number of outcomes so after we know the number of outcomes we are asked to identify the sample space so what is our sample space sample space we write like this s equal to so you can see you have o positive o negative o positive the possible blood types o negative then you have a positive a negative b positive b negative a b positive and a b negative so this is the sample space of the blood types so when you ask for the blood type you will get one of these answers these are all possibilities the set of all possibilities that is the sample space let's take one more example on writing sample space and here is that example construct a sample space for rolling two dice so here we are rolling two dice if you roll the first die let's see what you'll get by rolling the first you'll get one two three four five or six these are the possibilities when you roll the first die and by rolling the second you'll get one two three four five or six those are the possibilities from the second but you are rolling two of them one after another okay or two of them together in either ways we are going to list the possible outcomes what you will get first what you'll get on the first and what you'll get on the second so i am going to list all of them here so that list is the sample space and here i am creating the sample space using a table method or a tabular method okay now the table is ready so the possible outcomes are you'll have one on the first and one on the second so which can be written as one comma one you may get one in the first and two in the second so one comma two one in the first and three in the second one comma three one in the first and four in the second one comma four one in the first and five in the second one comma five one in the first and six in the second one comma six similarly two in the first and one in the second two comma one two in the first and two in the second two comma two two on the first three on the second two comma three two on the first and four on the second two comma four and so on okay so these are the all possible outcomes so if you count here you have, we have six 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 and six so the total number of outcomes is six times six that is 36 so here we list all possible outcomes and we list all possible outcomes in the form of a table so this is the sample space for rolling two dice so this is the end of the first video where we talk about some fundamental terms related to probability and next is in next video we are going to define probability and calculate some probabilities but this is the end for this video thank you so much for watching